Ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at, some people call this a PCV valve, but PCV valves usually have an inner valve that you can hear flat back and forth that would open and close. This does not have such a valve in it, and Mercedes does not call this a PCV. They call this a crankcase rebreather valve and it sits on the back of the motor on the passenger side and it has a hose that then goes from the valve itself into the air intake manifold and the reason why you want to change this several reasons two reasons this rubber gasket over time gets brittle and it will crack and then you'll have oil leaks around this and the oil leak will then drip down onto your air uh, onto your catalytic converter and the exhaust <clears throat> this leak happens only when the engine is running so you're gonna have this leak of oil dropping down on the catalytic converter and of course the catalytic converter is hot so it's gonna burn off and your car will be smoking and it'll have a horrible smell. The other reason why you want to change this over time this little diaphragm this rubber diaphragm right here it's soft it'll get hard and brittle and it too will crack and break and you can end up with pieces inside your air intake manifold that can then clog your flaps, your internal flaps. I spoke about that in the previous video. Just look it up on the air intake manifold failure explanation on my channel. And it can allow an excessive amount of oil to then bypass this rebreather valve going down into the hose and ending up inside your air intake manifold which will also then cause those flaps to get suited up with oil and soot and then they get harder to turn and they break so you want to change this piece out uh, regularly I would say once every 80,000 miles or so. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to start off by taking the front cover off. I'm going to take off these hoses for the ear. One. Then the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take off this hose for the circulation pump. Get that out of the way. Then we're going to reach back here, get that clip, and we're going to remove the air intake manifold. Uh, air filter housing. Once we've done that, then we're ready to locate that rebreather, the crankcase rebreather. So in looking at the original piece that's on there, the bolts that are on it are not the same. They're, they're, they're six pointed, but they're shaped differently. So I'm gonna have to use another socket. But right here, this is the hose that we're gonna take off. And we're gonna start by taking that off right now. Just gotta pull back and forth on it. And it comes off and uh, then we'll remove this piece all right so I already loosened those up and I'll give you the size in a minute I think it's a Torx 10 so I'm just gonna use my fingers to remove them it's four of them I've already moved, removed one so let's just take off the others Uh, 
reaching down behind where the camera cannot go to remove the third one. When you're putting these back on, you need to lock tight them so they don't vibrate loose because that will create a leak as well. So now we're going to remove the last one. That cut, I just got that cut when I was removing the hose. No big deal. Okay, now all the bolts are loose. So let's take this off. When we take it off, we're going to inspect it to make sure that the gasket came off with it. So this is the old part. Remember that diaphragm that I told you about? Let's look at the original. That's the original. Let's look at the new piece. That's the new piece. See? See the diagram? One diaphragm in the middle? It's worn out. That can cause more oil than is desired, if any to bypass this and go into the air intake manifold. So I'm gonna be using thread locker blue on these because we don't want it to you know, vibrate loose. Quickest way I like to thread lock my screws, I'll just put them on just like that. I only go to the depth that it's gonna go inside. That's it. The thread locked, it will be good and will not vibrate loose. The next thing you want to do before putting on that part is to just take the rag and clean the surface. We've already inspected the old part to make sure that the rubber bushing came off with it. So once that's clean, we're gonna then take the old the, the new part and slide it into position over that little lip. See how that went on with a nice clamp. Then we're gonna line it up with the holes and we're gonna start by screwing those in by hand. That's one. I'm gonna make sure that they're all lined up right. second one. We're gonna hand tighten them down for now. Total of four of them. Make sure you don't drop your screws, bolts. This is the third one. Fourth one goes right behind this little lip right here, and it's easy to miss, especially if you're just checking to make sure that everything's both done just right. So I'll tighten that up. Okay, so I've tightened up all those four bolts down to 10 foot pounds, and uh, the last thing that you need to do after you tighten them down is to reconnect the hose, the rebreather hose right here, this crank. And you're going to push it all the way down until it clicks like that. And while you're there, you might as well just make sure that it's connected 
to the uh, air intake, which it is. This cap right here is a crank, crank uh, case cap. These can also leak. There's a rubber bushing on the inside. I'll probably do another video which covers three of these. One on this side, one on the other side with a nice gigantic one in the center that also needs changing. So, hope this video was helpful. This is a crank case uh, pressure release and you want to change this out regularly because it does wear out, it leaks and it can cause your air intake manifold flaps to get clogged. Um, hope this video was helpful. Subscribe so that you can get other video notifications. Um, thumbs up if you like this video. And if you have any questions, complaints, or suggestions, just let me know. Thanks. Don't forget to subscribe.